G'day folks, the 79 series Land Cruiser versus the new Hilux. Something I've been debating and researching myself on this trip as we had this as a feature vehicle and this as the camera car. Pretty cool camera car, I've got to say. There are a lot of things that I like about both that I don't like about the other and in the end, there is one standout vehicle. But which one will it be and which one will it be for you? Before we verse these two fine vehicles, let's talk about the 79 first. Just to address a few things, especially for the 79 series haters. Now, the 79 series was never meant to be made as a touring off-roader. It was always meant for the mines. The mines needed it and they couldn't pass the Euro emissions, which I don't know why Australia follows Euro emissions, but they do. Besides the point, they put the V8 in it, which came out of the 200 series. They widened the front axle to fit it. Just meant for the mines, not for the public. It was brought here because the mines begged for a reliable Toyota Land Cruiser 70 series. And there it is. But it became so popular with people like myself as well, buying these and kicking them out because they are essentially a cult vehicle. They are like the Mustang of four-wheel drives. It's like the Harley Davidson of four-wheel drives. That's my interpretation of it because of the loud noise out the back and the sluggish speed that I actually travel at, right? They make a lot of noise, they don't go very fast, but they look cool and they can do wonderful things out in the outback. There are a lot of other little flaws with it, but that's the thing. It's a cult vehicle. It's like people buying a Defender. Why would you buy a Defender, in my point of view? It's because they love that car. It's a car you love. It's not a practical car. Let's just address that right here. It's not a practical car. If blokes want to go out or, or ladies want to go out and spend a ton of money on these to make it a really cool car, who cares? That's what they want to do. They enjoy it. I enjoyed it. It's a bloody good car and it makes me feel good when I'm out in, out in the outback off-roading. So that is a 79 in a nutshell, for me anyway, and for a lot of other people out there. The Hilux, a vehicle which is, I would say, equally as popular than the 79 series, but more sold than the 79 series. This is a practical work ute, it's a practical family vehicle, it's a practical tourer. It has a bloody good name, it has the unbreakable name, doesn't mean it is unbreakable, but it has the unbreakable tag. Competing against the 79, it does pretty damn well. This is a great option for people who don't want to spend a ridiculous amount of money on a 79 series and they just want to do a practical build on a smaller vehicle also fuel economy we can talk about that soon but the Hilux I would say is as popular in a cult sense now first things first I want to talk about the price of both vehicles because there are actually quite a few people that are debating whether they should go for something like this or something like that. Now, not, not only am I going to talk about the price, but I'm going to talk about value for money. So, I owned that outright. I bought that a long time ago. Eight years ago, in fact. That was $75,000 at the time. Nowadays, they're about eighty to 85000 You still have to put a tray on it. This, 67000 I managed to talk them down to 64000 Those figures right there, Nowadays, this is essentially 20 grand less than the 79 series. Now, the 79 series has as much power as the Hilux from stock. Value for money straight off the bat, definitely the Hilux. There is a $20,000 difference, but that's not the only difference. To get that 79 series to a comfortable touring spec, you've got to put a tray on it. You've got to sort some things out with it comfort wise if you want comfort that is if you just want a very basic unit there's your farm truck there's your mining truck this it's got everything you already need in it i didn't have to correct the rear differential i didn't have to upgrade the seats in it the stereo didn't have to upgrade there's so many things in this vehicle i don't need to touch whereas that one i spent a lot of money on this vehicle especially in the early days 
If it comes down to how much you want to spend and value for money for a good touring setup, you're going to want to go to Hilux unless you want to spend a lot of cash. You can make a really cool monster out of a 79, but it's going to cost you a lot of money. Welcome ladies and gents to the turning circle battle between the Luxy and the 79. And we're off, here we go. Luxy off to a good start. Look at that inside turning circle. That's a lot tighter than the 79. Can the 79 stay ahead? Whoa, 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 79's blocking. It's blocking. Luxy coming again. 79 blocking again. Very good at blocking. Very good at blocking. But how long can it hold up for? Whoa, here we go. The Luxy has overtaken or undertaken the 79, which never stood a chance. On the instant replay, we've got the Luxy coming around on the inside. Look at that. Nice and close. Nice and tight. Very tight turning circle. The 79 is far too wide. You are too slow. You are gone. You are done. You are dusted. Luxy taking a cake. Well done, Luxy. Off you go, ladies and gents. That was the turning circle battle. I hope you enjoyed it. Fun to drive and appealing, especially to males and females who like the big V8 singing. Now, this vehicle, keep in mind, is a 2013. This vehicle was a 2021 model, or well, 2020 really. I'm going to compare this in two different ways. This being pre-DPF, you can actually hear the V8, you can hear the grunt. It makes it so much more fun to drive. You can hear the power, you can feel the power once it's tuned. Before it's tuned, it's a bit sluggish to be honest. This will run circles and rings around this without any tunes on it. But let's put it into perspective. If we have a 2020 version of this versus a 2020 version of that, yeah, you have the big V8, you can't really hear it. And without tuning it, you can't really feel it either because this produces just as much. This will be way more snappy than a 2020 well, than any of these really. But the, my point here is being a 2020 model, it has DPF. So you're not gonna be able to enjoy the sound of the V8. For me personally, a V8, if you can't hear it, I don't get as much enjoyment out of it. That's just me. V8s, I feel like I need to hear. Every V8 I've owned, I've put a twin exhaust or an exhaust and I've made sure it's loud so I can hear it. Which is the best daily driver? I'd be lying if I told you it was a 79. This is by far the best daily driver. That big beast over there, as much fun and cool as it is, it is an absolute nightmare to park at the shops. It's an absolute nightmare to do anything in it. Drop off the kids at school, reverse into car parks, you can't drive forward into a car park without taking out some door panels on other cars. This is magic compared to that, as a daily. Toughest Beach and WA Challenge. 79 Series is up first. That's the most fun I've had this year in this vehicle. The Hilux is up next. Is it going to be better or is it going to be worse? Let's find out. Going up.
<laughs> Just made it one here. So comparing it up to the 70, this really pissed it up. First go. Didn't have to have two attempts. Look, every day is different. That was easy. I have a question for you. Comment below, do you think that was a fair challenge? And what do you think the major difference was? And are you surprised? Keen to know. Comment down below. Let's keep going. Skills to drive either vehicle. It's an interesting one because this only comes out in manual. This does come out in manual and auto. However, you have to specifically order manual and wait for it about four to five months to receive one. So most people are gonna buy auto with this vehicle. Interesting. So which takes more skill to drive? Well, I'd have to say the 79 series definitely takes more skill to drive, but then there's also things you need to learn about the auto that you may not know about, like putting it into neutral to get into full drive and all that, but that's kind of like a technical thing. It's not really a skill. So when it comes down to skills, more difficult to master and drive, definitely the 79 series with the manual. Driving up rocky, steep terrain, that's definitely a lot more fun to drive. It rocks a lot, but that's half the fun. This Hilux glides up. It's still very fun to climb with, not as fun as the 79, but just as capable. You may have to pick a different line every now and then, but in actual fact, the Hilux will have more clearance on the front than the 79 because it doesn't have that diff hanging down. When it comes to rear clearance, the Hilux has it over the 79 because the Hilux has the leaf pack sitting on top of the axle, whereas the 79 series, it has it underneath the axle. And everyone who owns the 79 series wishes it was the other way around because that is where they get hung up, especially when they have nine or 10 leaves hanging underneath. It hangs down lower than the actual diffs themselves. That is the Achilles heel to the 79 when it's driving around in rutted country and just for general clearance. And this is why you need to put 35s on it to be able to perform as well as this does on say 31 and a half or 32s. Sitting inside a 79 series, you definitely feel like the king of off-roading. Doesn't mean you're the king of off-roading, I'm just saying it feels like it. The interior is pretty basic, as most of you already know. Very basic indeed. I've actually changed these seats. These seats make it a lot better. And in fact, I like these seats better than the stock Hilux seats, but the 79 stock seats are pretty woeful at the best of time. Like I said, it's all basic. You get thrown around a lot in this vehicle, but it is part of the fun. It is a fun vehicle to drive. It's a fun vehicle to travel in. And one thing I do like about the aircon that I've never experienced in any other vehicle is the aircon vent underneath the steering wheel directed at your crutch. So on a hot day and you're wearing shorts, it's a damn good feeling. Let me move to the Hilux. Very comfortable straight off, beautiful interior all the stuff you need on the dash here. Yeah, there's not really anywhere to put a pillar pod or, or a scan gauge or something because there's bloody airbags everywhere, which makes this a lot safer too. But apart from that, there's nothing you really have to add to this vehicle apart from a navigation system. And that's pretty much about it. Oh, and the UHF radio. That is all I've added to the interior of this vehicle and it's all I feel I need to add to the interior of this vehicle. So in the 79, I added a stereo, I added speakers because you only get two speakers in the 79. The Hilux fitted with tweeters, speakers front, speakers rear, a good stereo with Apple Play. So on a long journey, a long drive, thousands of kilometers, everything's right there. In the 79, you need to put a good stereo in it because the vehicle is so friggin' loud and so tinny, you need to crank that music right up to be able to hear it properly. Family and kids friendly. Now this is where there's a tug of war because the 79 
is best for smaller kids. And that's much to do with the large windows and the small seats in the rear. So small kids, they've got a big window to look out of. They can see heaps of stuff. And the droning of the V8 also sends them to sleep when you're driving. So it's great for you know, babies and young kids and stuff like that. That's a great car to send my kids to sleep in. The Hilux, much better for you know, other adults in the back and of course your bigger teenage kids, especially if you have tall genes in your family. You're going to want more room and there's more room in the Hilux, believe it or not. However, that, that said, smaller kids find it harder to see out of the windows because the seats are lower, the windows sit a bit higher. So, you know, there's a catch-22 there, really, when you think about families. Corrugations. Definitely the Hilux handles corrugations way, way better than the 79. Look, they do have different suspension, but it's more to do with solid axle versus IFS. This vehicle absorbs it way better than a 79 does. Fuel economy on the 79. I'm getting in town, now I have tuned it, so I'm getting slightly better behavior out of the motor and slightly better fuel. I'm getting around 14 litres per 100 around town. As soon as I hit the highway and I go above 90 kilometres per hour, I'm looking at 15, 16, 17 litres per 100, depending on the headwind. If I'm towing, around the same really. It doesn't change much with a 79, possibly up to 18 litres per 100. And that's towing a 1.5 tonne trailer, camper trailer, 1.5 tonne in total. But moving on to the Hilux, Oh, the fuel economy, it is so good. When I had this stock, it has changed a lot though. So when I had this vehicle stock, I could keep it to about 8.5 to 9 litres per 100. City driving, not fanging around like an idiot, but if you put your boot to it, it was about 10 litres per 100. Now it's sitting at about 12 litres per 100 if you put your right boot into it. Maybe 11.5 if you ease it around with all the mods that are on it now. But when you tow with this vehicle, it'll jump up to about 15 litres per 100 and it'll stay there. It'll stay at 15 litres per 100 towing the exact same trailer as the Land Cruiser would, would tow. Going off-road, you can get about 17 litres per 100 towing. That's the most that I've got out of the Hilux so far. 17 litres per 100 towing a trailer in all kind of off-road conditions. Beach sand, gravel roads, rocky climbs, and river crossings with river stones. 17 litres per 100 is the worst I've got. Towing, which is better? It's an interesting one. I really enjoyed towing with this vehicle. Six and a half thousand k's through all kinds of stuff, soft sand, everything. It really impressed me how well the Hilux actually tows. Because I honestly thought this would be so much better at towing than that vehicle. That said, however, I do feel if I was going to pick one that to tows better than the other, I'm going to have to say the 79. And I think it's because I've had so much experience towing with it. It's never been a problem towing with the 79, except for when I snapped that axle that time and a couple other incidents, but let's not talk about that. My brain says on par, these two tow, but my heart says the 79. I don't know why, I think it's because I had a lot more experience with it. You see my sunnies? Oh, Adrian Scott. How you going, mate? Yeah, good. I'm just out filming. Oh, mate, that is a great idea. I'll do that right now. I've got to go because I'm filming. All right. Adrian Scott, on you, mate. All right. If I had to choose between these two, which one would I choose and why? Oh, man. It's actually a really tough one, this one. 
I'm leaning towards the Land Cruiser. I'm sorry, Luxie, but I've got so much history with the Land Cruiser. It's a cool truck. I love it. If I had to choose, which I don't want to choose, it'd be like choosing between your children. You can't do that. But, you know, let's, let's go, I'm probably going a little bit too far here. They're vehicles, right? I would have to choose the Land Cruiser, the 79 series, just because of all the things I've been through with it. But which one would you choose? And from a practicality level, brain-wise, would be the Hilux. But my heart is in the 79 series because I've done so much in it. That's how I'm justifying it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Thanks to Adrian Scott for that great question.